I've been using my CalDigit Element Hub for over six months and in this video I'll show you all the good and bad features of this Thunderbolt 4 USB-C dock. We'll start with the unboxing and physical properties of the CalDigit Element Hub, then we'll move to some usability and speed tests, I will show you some configurations and settings in which I've been using the dock, and finally we're going to break down who this dock is really for, who should avoid it and who should opt in for the slightly newer but very different CalDigit TS4 dock. Hello coders, my name is Caro and I'm a software engineer and a huge tech enthusiast and in this new series I'm going to bring you tech reviews of all the products and gadgets that have the potential to streamline and simplify your workflow, saving you precious time and making your job that much more enjoyable. Talking about saving your time, let's get straight into it. Apple might have started adding back more ports to its MacBook Pro lineup, but it doesn't change the fact that the number and types of ports found in MacBooks and other laptops are rarely enough for daily tasks, especially if you want to connect a monitor or two, keyboard, mouse or trackpad, your hard drive, my camera, whatever else you need for doing your job efficiently. On the other hand, if you're moving between multiple workspaces, which is quite popular with current trend of hybrid work, even if you did have enough ports, connecting them all every day would be tiresome. That's where the USB-C hubs and docks come into place, and today's speak is CalDigit Element Hub, with not only USB-C, but also Thunderbolt 4, which adds some really great benefits over the standard USB-C that we'll discuss later in the video. Let's start by unboxing our dock. Right away you can see the highlight of the features supported by the Element Hub. It has 8 ports, although you need to flip to the side of the box to see what actual ports those are. Plus the number 8 is a little bit misleading as one of them is used for connecting to your host device, hence it's never really available. The dock supports a single 8K monitor or two 4K monitors at the maximum refresh rate of 60Hz. It has the ability to charge your laptop and supports Thunderbolt 4 and USB-C 3.2. Flipping the box to the side, you can see a more detailed description of those features, with the most important being the actual speeds of the ports available on the hub. 40 gigabits per second for the four Thunderbolt 4 ports and 10 gigabits per second for the four USB-A ports. It's compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and 4 as well as USB 4 and USB-C. It also delivers 60 watts of power to your host device. For comparison, the standard MacBook Pro 13 or 14 in charger delivers just 7 watts more, so you shouldn't run into any issues there. You might need to carry an additional charger if your laptop is more power hungry though. The other side of the box shows more pictures of the dock and schematic representation of the port's positions. It also gives you some more understanding about the charging capabilities of the other ports, namely Thunderbolt 4 ports would support 15 watts of power, while USB ports deliver 7.5 watts. Inside the box you can find a thank you note, and right below there's the main device. It measures 18 by 70 by 114 millimeters and weighs 180 grams, which is pretty much the same as the new iPhone 14, just twice as thick. Then you get some rubber feet that you can install on either side of this dock, making it easy to position it in the most usable way for you without the fear of scratching any surfaces or unwanted movement. Then there's your power cord measuring 1 meter in length, as well as a 80 centimeter long Thunderbolt 4 cable, meant to facilitate the connection between your host device and the dock. Don't worry if your laptop or device doesn't have a Thunderbolt port, you can use the same cable in a USB-C mode. Underneath that you can find your power brick. And here's a quick ASMR break for you before we get into assembling this setup. Power brick measures 20 by 74 by 150 millimeters, weights 308 grams and has a matte black finish. You can see that it's actually way bigger than the device itself, which might be quite disappointing if you were looking at using it in a strictly portable manner. However, using the Element Hub with the supplied power brick means that you can forget your regular charger. So I guess it kind of cancels it out. Here you can see me assembling all the parts together. I decided to place it on my desk permanently with the power brick and the cord hidden in the cable channel underneath my desk. I don't have a huge preference for USB-C over USB-A or the other way around, so I decided to place my dock USB-A side to the front so that the permanently connected power cable is out of sight. 
You can also decide if the host connection faces left or right by simply flipping your hub and reattaching the rubber feet where you need them. As for my setup, I have my 30 inch 5K monitor connected to the back of the hub via Thunderbolt 4 cable, as well as my Camlink connected with a USB A to USB C adapter. And for those who don't know what Camlink is, it's a device that allows you to use a DSLR or mirrorless camera as a webcam. With this setup, I have one free port left at the back. On the front side of the dock, I have my LG dongle that connects the mouse, then a lightning cable for my trackpad. Uh, I prefer a wired connection in this case because I switch between personal and work laptop on a daily basis and wired connection just works, while otherwise I would have to reconnect Bluetooth manually. I often also keep my SSD connected to the front of the dock that leaves one port that I often use to connect my phone when implementing Android apps or my Wacom tablet when doing some digital drawing. And getting back to that SSD, let's run some speed tests. The results are actually completely not what I expected and I will share what I learned with you now. The way we're going to do this is to run two control tests and two real tests using my Samsung T5 SSD and Blackmagic Disk Speed Test software. Each test instance will be run three times and will take the average result. We'll first connect it directly to my Mac using USB-C interface, then we'll connect it to a $20 Ugreen USB-C to USB-A 3.0 hub from Amazon, and then follow up with tests using CalDigit Element Hub with the SSD being connected via USB-C and then USB-A. So first we'll run a control test by connecting my SSD directly to my Mac using the original USB to USB cable. You can see that the speed average at around 385 megabytes per second for reading and just five megabytes per second slower for writing. Pretty cool. Now let's run our second test. For that purpose, we are using the previously mentioned $20 Ugreen uh, hub from Amazon. As you can see, the average speeds are only around 5 to 10% slower than the direct connection. It's actually much better than what I expected from this chip hub. And now for the real test. For both USB Type A and Type C, average reading speed sits at 430 megabytes per second and writing at 390 megabytes per second. Now, what really surprised me is that reading and writing with the Element Hub connected in between my MacBook and my SSD produces faster speeds than the direct connection. I suspect it might have something to do with the dog delivering additional power via that USB cable, but I'm not really sure. Uh, so please let me know in the comments below if you have any answer to that mystery. <laughs> Before we get into more details about what makes Thunderbolt 4 so great, if you feel like Element Hub might just be the dog you were looking for, check the description below as Try and Buy, the same store I purchased my hub from, was kind enough to offer some additional free goodies for the first 10 people who purchased the Element Hub. Use the code EHCARACODES at the checkout to get a free cable organizer with your CalDigit Element Hub order. What makes Thunderbolt 4 so great? and when it is worth the extra money that you need to pay for it. First of all, if you don't have any Thunderbolt 4 devices and you don't plan on upgrading anytime soon, it's probably best to look for another dog. However, if you happen to have a Thunderbolt 4 device, there are some neat features you're going to gain. Probably my favorite is that you can now connect up to two 4K monitors or a single 8K monitor, which isn't available with any other connection type like USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3 that support the maximum of a single 4K monitor. It means that two monitors connected to your dock are able to receive data from your laptop that travels through just a single Thunderbolt 4 cable. Thunderbolt 4 offers the same maximum speed for data transfer as Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4, however, the minimum speed is at least twice as high, making your connections and data transfers faster on average. Finally, you can daisy chain your Thunderbolt 4 devices with minimal or non-loss of speed. This gives you unlimited possibilities of how you want to use your workspace or creative space. Who is CalDigit Element Hub really for? And should you maybe spend some more money on the newer and more powerful CalDigit TS4 Thunderbolt 4 dock? The short answer is included in this video where I compare both of them side by side and make my recommendation for 